So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So unexpectedly, what I have here is the 2018 Jeep Wrangler JK Unlimited. This particular one has 1 million pesos worth of mods. So remember, this is the same owner who had the Ranger Wild Truck with as well worth 1 million pesos worth of mods. And two, the Jeep Wrangler JL, the one that came after this. So I have reviews of those things. Of those will be the description down below. So why did they want to review this? Because of this. So powering this JK Wrangler is a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine with 285 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque so when i brought this up here just on this part of the garage i knew i was driving the v6 because of the sound and as well this has a boiler exhaust i'll let you listen to it now so i will not go through all of the mods because there are a lot Again, because the owner loves the sake of building what his his SUVs, pickup trucks, very big steel bar over here up front, and as well like with the JL he modified few years back, you have rigid lights over here and above here just on the hood too. So not much modifications here. So as well you notice I didn't open the hood. So remember two years ago the JL Wrangler tried to kill me. So check that out in my review too. So as well you get beefier tires here, Cooper tires, your usual Jeep modifications here and you get this same set of wheels like with the JL too. So like with that too, you get Terraflex Falcon shocks. It's not the OEM like that of the Ford Ranger Wild Truck. So I already have experience with this suspension and as well going up here in the garage. It's really comfortable. I can say straight away. But what I'm really excited about is when I get to drive this. So a few more modifications here on the side. The big highlight for me here is this Go Rhino step board. This one costs itself 41,000 pesos. Ironically, this one is more expensive than the Borla exhaust which costs 36,000 pesos. So as well, like every other Jeep, you can remove the panels here and there but I'm not allowed to for obvious reasons. And if you notice from the windows, the windscreens, there's no more easter eggs like that of the rest of the Jeep lineup because all of these windows now have been upgraded to Mopar with official Mopar parts as you can see in the badges here. My favorite part on the side profile, you get numerous badges here, a COD badge and my favorite part is the 75 year badge. So here now at the rear of the Jeep Wrangler JK. It looks similar than that of the newer one, the JL model. So yet again, you have your border exhaust here, tow hitches and your massive spare tire over here. So another trait with all Jeep Wranglers. Oops, it's locked. This has a somewhat split tailgate. So you open this one first and you can open the glass panel afterwards. So the space here looks pretty much the same than that of the newer JL model. So same structure over here, the roll cage over here. Since again, you can remove all of this if you want only. But the owner decided not to anyways. And remember, to close this properly, you have to do this first. Otherwise, if you do it the other way around, you cannot put this down anymore. So that's about it in the exterior. So let's check out the interior. So this is the interior now of the Wrangler JK. Okay, it looks very similar than that of the JL that I reviewed two years ago. The steering wheel is like every other Jeep Wrangler. And the biggest upgrade here in the interior, surprisingly, okay, like with the previous JL that the owner used to own, this has the upgraded Android system. So it takes a while to boot up, but once it gets going, it's really, really good. And the reverse camera quality is pretty excellent too. So I'm not actually sure if the phone connectivity buttons will work now since this is an updated unit. So another big update too is this car Robotor instrument cluster. It looks much better than that of the analogs of the JL, I must say. Since it's a little bit hot. So I really love when it flashes up. There's a lot of info you can do here and there. So here below the infotainment system, you have your window adjustments on here all in the middle i love that feature with all the wranglers and then further down below you have your air conditioning control some of your off-road functions then you have your gear lever here so as well i forgot to mention this one is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission like with the jl2 you have your manual handbrake here two cup holders with an ashtray the ashtray is pretty big so 
my big water jug will definitely fit in here. So on here on the right side of the passenger, you have your grab handle here with the Jeep and a 1941 embossment. Glove box. Okay, it's tall, but I would say it's a little bit narrow, but at least it's deep. And then above here, another upgrade you have for your light functions. I love that feature. <laughs> and then visor, vanity, mirror only, there's no light. And of course, knowing a Jeep, yep, very good, it extends. I like that swoopy design of this visor. And like what I said in the exterior, you can move these panels to make this act like a convertible if you want to only. And then here in the doors, pretty simple too. There's only net storages, but for some reason, this front door keeps closing by itself. So at least there's a soft close function. It's the same too for the rear door. There's only a net storage over here. Center console box with a lot of compartments. You can open one, two, and then three. Yeah, at least you can put a lot of stuff in. So seats here as well, they're only fabric. There's no leather in here. But why would you need leather in this Jeep Wrangler if you're planning to off-road this a lot? And space there in the back, I would say pretty much the same like with the JL model. I have excellent space throughout. And few more toys here in the back. You have your window adjustments here. And then two cup holders, one small one and one big one. My big water jug fits in the big one. Uh, that halogen lights over here. That's pretty much it. Yeah, it's pretty much the same like that of the JL. The JL, I would say, there's a little bit few more improvements here on the quality. Let's not take this away with the JK. It's alright, but the ergonomics of the JL is a little bit better than this, I have to say. So, let's have a quick tour of this interior. Let's go for a drive. So, driving this Jeep Wrangler JK, I love that indicator sound. I never heard that before. And actually, so, to my surprise, it feels like you're driving the newer one too, the JL. I mean, it's so easy to dive. I mean, the steering is pretty light. There's no diving modes, by the way. It's just for your off-road functions. So this is as it is. And yeah, the visibility all around. Large windows throughout. No issue whatsoever. And then if you're not just hooning around, okay. Oh, okay, it's pretty, but docile, I have to say. Once you start flooring it though, yeah, you will hear the exhaust. I, but I'm so happy that I driven a different kind of Wrangler. The V6 model, so let's throw it a bit. Oh, okay. Comparing with the newer one, the JL, okay, the engine of this, of course, being a naturally aspirated engine, this one is much more linear. So, comparing with the JL model, since that had a turbocharged four cylinder engine, so there's a little bit more oomph for that. But I would say straight line performance, they feel a little bit similar. So as well, this being the 2.6 liter V6 engine, the ever popular Penstar, or I forgot the official name, just put it here on screen. Yeah, this has been a proven engine throughout America. This engine powered the base model Chargers, Challengers, and many more I would say. I think even the Chrysler 300C. And then here, NVH surprisingly is pretty good, not not bad for what this is, I have to say. And then body lean, of course there is. It's a Jeep with, with heavily modified suspension, I don't mind it. But surprisingly, compared with the J, I keep forgetting now, the JL one, I don't know, this thing feels a little bit lighter, more or less the same, but I find this just a tad lighter than that of the JL model for some reason. Maybe it's just down to the tires and the what well, the suspension. Then over hump, pretty easy. It, it feels like you're going through nothing. Uh, okay, handling wise, not bad for what this is. I have to say. This is what the JL for me was lacking. Of course, off the line, the JL kicked down a little bit better because I, again, it has the assist since it has a turbocharged engine. But this, once this kicks down, you're off. And I would say this V6, if modified like this, since this has a Borla exhaust, it sounds really fruity. It sounds probably crazy like a sports car. I, I dig this surprisingly. And as well, the fuel economy won't be as good, I would say, than that of the JL. But surprisingly, it's reading here in MBG, not in kilometers per liter. So the reading I'm getting now is 14 and a half miles per gallon. So I have no idea what that is in kilometers per liter. And like with the <laughs> the JL model, 
yet this fails a U-turn test. The turning circle of this is pretty wide. Okay, this I would say this Borla exhaust is really loud, surprisingly. Of, uh, maybe it's just down. I was I was stuck with the GL with the four cylinder, which too had a Borla exhaust, but. Yeah, it sounds way better, I have to say. Okay, wow. That sounds epic. So what else to talk about with this Wrangler JK? The engine <laughs> is the star of the show, without question. Yeah, I'm surprised with this engine. Finally got to dive another Jeep on my channel after almost two years now oh so, yeah that's a quick review of this wrangler jk that's been heavily modified worth 1 million pesos worth of mods i'd like to thank the owner again for making this review possible so i'll be back again here with two more reviews coming up very soon so <laughs> so i hope you guys like and subscribe and i will see you hopefully with more jeep reviews and more car reviews coming along very soon Bye bye